Not only Decker will be making her NASCAR Xfinity Series debut in 2021, it looks like there are more Netflix shows and more TV shows that are coming for NASCAR in the foreseeable future. And it looks like Garrett Smithley will be attempting to make this year's Daytona 500. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. We have quite a few NASCAR stories to discuss here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going to start off all the sponsorship announcements from today. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's start off with Richard Petty Motorsports as Armorall is going to be the primary for Eric Jones for this year's Daytona 500. This will be the first time that Armorall is going to be sponsoring a NASCAR Cup Series car since 2010. I believe the last time he sponsored a Cup Series car was with Tony Stewart in 2010 when Tony was still racing. And here's something else very interesting to know. SCB will have a decal on the car to make 50 years with Richard Petty and be an associate partner for the whole season for that team in 2021. So, Armour is coming back to sponsor. It looks like SCB is not going to be a major sponsor for 2021. On top of that, there is more news with Richard Petty Motorsports as Columbia is going to remain a partner of Richard Petty Motorsports and they are going to outfit the team for 2021. And in addition to that, They'll be looking to do some activation later this year with Eric Jones. And they are also going to be working with 2311 Racing with Bubble Wall. So it's really good for both parties because there was a possibility that Columbia had left Richard Penny Motorsports and that they were going to go work with Bubble Walls with 2311 Racing. But you get both hands. Columbia still gets to work with Bubble Walls, but they're also going to continue working with Eric Jones in 2021. That is really, really exciting to know. And speaking of which, that armor all scheme is really, really awesome, by the way. But that is a story on the Richard Petty Motorsports saga. Lenovo is going to be sponsoring Tyler Reddick in this year's Daytona 500. I really like this paint scheme a lot. It's a really good paint scheme. I don't know how many races they are going to sponsor him. Apparently, this is not the only race that they're planning on sponsoring Tyler Lynn for the 2021 season. It's a new partnership that they started up, and I really do like this paint scheme a lot. It's going to be a great addition to see on the racetrack this year, and good luck to, Ty good luck to Tyler Reddick in this year's Daytona 500. The 2021 Bass First Shots Black Rival Coffee Scheme for Ty Dillon has officially been revealed, and it's as good as I thought it was going to be. The paint scheme looks really, really excellent. It's really, really beautiful. I do hope Ty Dillon can make this year's Daytona 500 so we can see that paint scheme out of the racetrack, but if he's not able to make the Daytona 500, I really do hope and pray that they still make the scheme regardless if he makes the Daytona 500 or not, because this paint scheme looks really, really excellent. It's a great paint scheme, and I do think it could have really shot at making Daytona 500, and it's a nice paint scheme to see, and that is really good paint scheme to see. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into all the other major stories that have came out from today. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's start off with the 2021 Bush Clash entry list. There's a few major things to know from the entry list you guys are seeing on the screen. First thing that you really do notice from this is that Kevin Harvick is the only one that is running a car from last year. Kevin Harvick is running a 2024, while everyone else is running 2021 Chevys, 2021 Toyotas as well, and Fords as well. Well, Kevin Harvick is going to be running a 2020 Chevy. I'm assuming that's going to be able to save money, but also road course cars as well. You kind of are able to run like older cars and still be really competitive, and it's last year's car, so I was probably getting rid of it as well, but that is something to note as well. And also, if you also take a look at the entry list, Ty Dillon has a I on it, which means he is ineligible. So it looks like Ty Dillon has officially declared for the Xfinity Series. So I am assuming that Ty Dillon probably has some more Xfinity Series races that are up in the stable. It's just not confirmed what other races he's going to run. We know he's going to run four races for Joe Gibbs Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, but I'm wondering what other races Ty Dillon is going to run in 2021. So those are some of the intriguing things to know, but the first entry list for 2021 is officially released as the racing season kicks off Tuesday evening. We're only two or three days away. I am extremely excited about that. On to the next story. Sasha Banks is going to be the honorary starter for this year's Daytona 500. For many of you who don't know, Sasha Banks is from the WWE, and she is going to be the honorary starter for this year's Daytona 500. I think it's really cool that someone that is, is coming from the WWE is coming over to NASCAR and being the honorary starter. I think it's a really good opportunity for her, and maybe she'll be able to learn about NASCAR, maybe do something with NASCAR as well, but it's really cool that she is getting an opportunity to come over to NASCAR and be the honorary starter for the race in 2021. On to the next story. Robbie Lyons is going to be driving for the MBM HRE partner car for the Xfinity Series opener at Daytona National Speedway, driving the number 61 car for them in 2021. 
I am really excited about Robbie Lyons getting an opportunity to drive with this team because Robbie Lyons, I think, is a very talented driver. He also does have some sponsorship and backing to back him up for 2021. I saw what he could do at JD Motorsports, and I thought he was really, really impressed to watch over JD Motorsports at times. And I do think that Robbie Lyons honestly has a really good shot at making Daytona five the Daytona season over because I don't think that this 61 car has enough owner points to make the season opener regardless, and there's going to be a lot of really fast cars. So owner's points are going to really be a really big benefactor, but I still don't think they're going to have enough to make it into the show. So Robbie Lyons is going to have to qualify in, but he's also a really good super speed racer, so I do think there's a really good opportunity for him to make it in. I do think he could have a shot at qualifying very well. I think his expectations are to go out there and try to do as well as he can. I mean, Timmy Hill in the same equipment pretty much almost won the Xfinity Series opener, ended up finishing third. So there's a good chance that this car will be really, really fast for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. For the Cup Series, not so much. But Robbie Lyons getting an opportunity to finish series to drive for them is really, really exciting. And good luck to Robbie Lyons in the season opener. I do hope that there might be some more opportunities for Robbie Lyons throughout the year. But we know Austin Hill is also going to be driving his car at points in 2021. On to the next story. We're going to talk about Indianapolis Raceway Park. Yes, you heard that right. According to Sheldon Creed, he was on a podcast earlier today with Kelly Crandall. And he said on Kelly Crandall's podcast that if most part is canceled... Indianapolis Raceway Park is the replacement race, according to him, and apparently from what he has heard. Now, this is really, really interesting. I have honestly been wanting to go back to Indianapolis Raceway Park for a very long time. The last time they raced out at Indianapolis Raceway Park for the NASCAR Truck Series was in 2011. They haven't raced there for 10 years, and there's a really strong possibility that if most part is to be canceled, that that is going to be the replacement race. And I do think the racing overall would be really good, and you also have a lot of great beating, banging races. The truck series is super aggressive. The racing would be good overall. Now, keep this in mind. This is not 100% guaranteed that this is going to happen. Remember, most part is not till the end of August, around end of August, early September. So, it's not anything until around August 25th, I'm not mistaken. So it's not for a long time. And it really is going to be on how much COVID-19, you know, with COVID-19 being around, that's going to really be a determination on if there's a strong possibility of this race being moved over to IRP or not. I really would like to see this happen. IRP getting an opportunity to come back to the truck series. I think the racing would overall be really good and we see some great racing. And I hope it is the case if that is possible. But we'll have to see what happens. It's going to really depend on what happens to COVID-19 and we'll see what happens in 2021. With that, as I'm currently editing tonight's video, it was announced that David Gillen is going to be partnering up with Black Tire, and they will be the major sponsor for him as he will be racing in the Truck Series opener in the number 17 truck for David Gillen Racing here in 2021. So he'll be starting the season off driving the number 17 truck in 2021. It makes a lot of sense for David Gillen to race the season opener. You know, David Gillen I, was usually a really good super speedway racer, usually ran up front. I mean, I remember 2013 in the NASCAR um, NASCAR Cup Series when he and David Reagan almost ended up winning. Well, David Reagan ended up winning, but David Gillen ended up finishing second in front row, ended up getting a 1-2 finish. So David Gillen is a really good super speedway racer, and it makes a lot of sense. And I hope he is able to make the show for the NASCAR Truck Series. Yeah, it's really awesome that David Gillen is going to be racing in the season over in 2021, and good luck to them headed into the 2021 season. On to the next story. We're going to go ahead and talk about Netflix once again a little bit, as NASCAR is currently working with Netflix and others on 24-plus new projects on top of the crew per NASCAR Entertainment Executive Matt Summers. For those of you who don't know, those of you who do not know, they are developing a show called The Crew, which is going to be premiering after Daytona season opener. I think the day after, I think the Monday after the Daytona 500, this show is going to be promoted. And it's based around a team, and it's basically a comedy. But a lot of fans have been not as big in support of this. It's more for, like, adults and stuff. And it's not for, like, kids like you and me and people of my age. are going to be for, like, 30 or 40-year-olds. So it's not going to be something intriguing. What I really do want to see from Netflix... The only series I really would want to see is something like they do with the Formula One, which is a drive for to survive. That is a very good show, and it can make me a bigger F1 fan than I used to be. I hope NASCAR does something similar to that, because I think NASCAR could really, really grow off of that, especially with the younger market. I think a lot more fans became F Formula One fans because of that Drive to Survive series. And I think it'd be really cool if they were able to do that. It is really cool, though, that Netflix and other brands are looking to brand NASCAR into something much bigger. It's really, really exciting. And hopefully, a Drive for Survive series is able to come out of that. But yeah, I like the idea that they are still attempting 
to develop, do cool things. And it's a really cool that there are more ideas possibly coming and more shows that are headed this way for the 2021 and beyond as well for Netflix. We'll see when those shows are announced and released. And hopefully there's some really good shows as well. On to the next story, we're going to go ahead and talk about Joe Graff Jr. As it was confirmed today that he will be returning to SS Greenlight Racing for the 2021 NASCAR Xfinity Series season as he will drive the number 07 car for 2020. And so he's moving from the 08 car over to the 07 car. There's other notes to note. Robin Pemberton is going to be the consultant for this team in 2021. Robert Pem Pemberton used to work with Mark Martin's team and also was a major consultant with NASCAR and official for NASCAR as well. And Mike Teska, who's worked with Rick Burr Racing, Jermaine Racing, and RCR, is going to be the crew chief for Gro Joe Graff Jr. heading in 2021. So it only looks like right now that they're going to be a one-car team. I'm going to be real with y'all here. I'm not really happy, really surprised that Joe Graff Jr. is coming back to the team, but I'm not all expecting that much from Joe Graff Jr. in 2021. Last year in 2020, Joe Graff Jr. did not get a single top 10 and finished 22nd in the standings and had a 24th place average finish. Gray Galding, who drove the same equipment in 2019 in a 0-8 car, scored one top five and four top tens and almost made the playoffs with the same equipment. You cannot tell me it is the equipment that made Joe Graff struggle. They're both the same age. Yes, uh, Greg Alding does have Cup Series experience, but let's be for real here. Joe Graff Jr. also drove for Rich Trost Racing in 2019 in the same equipment that Tyler Reddick drove in 2019 because Tyler Reddick won the title. And he failed to make a race and drove in the same equipment that drivers at college racing like Ross Chastain and A. Jalmendinger won in. And he failed to qualify for that, though the 10 car kind of struggled sometimes to qualify. So really, that's kind of what screwed him over. But Joe Graff Jr. doesn't impress me too much. I am wishing him the best luck, and maybe he'll be able to improve as he gets more experience. But I was not impressed with Joe Graff Jr. last year. 22nd in the Sandys is not impressive. I overall think his goal is to do, try to improve and try to finish in the top 20 in the Xfinity Series Sandys. So that might be a little more difficult because he usually runs around 21st or 25th most weeks. And he really, I just don't think he's going to struggle. Maybe Robert Pemberton can maybe overall help him, get meds for him as well, and become better. But I really am not expecting too much from Joe, Joe Graff Jr. heading into the 2021 season. I really hope he can improve, but I'm not really expecting too much from Joe Graff Jr. On to the first of two major stories of today's episode. Natalie Decker is going to Xfinity Series Racing. She'll be driving for RSS Racing in 2021 for five races. And this will be partnered up with the Rayoon Brothers for 2020. I don't remember if it's going to be a Chevy or Ford for them. Because I don't remember if they announced the manufacturer. I think they announced it today. But she'll be partnered up with RSS Racing in 2021 for five races in the number 23 car. Her first star will be at the Daytona Royal Course. And her sponsor is going to be Red Street Records, which is a record company that is owned by J.D. Marcus, who is a member of Rascal Flatts. Um, I'm going to be honest here with Natalie Decker. She's not ready for Xfinity. I don't care if it's a few starts or not. She's not ready for the Xfinity Series. I'm not anticipating that she is going to do a lot of big things. She ran in trucks in 2019 in the 54 car for DJ Crossley. She did not finish in the top 10 at all, had 10 races only finished, had 9 DNS that season. Last year, she improved a little bit. She got one top 5 and one top 10 at Daytona, but that is her only top 5 and top 10 in 32 starts. And yes, she drove for Nissan Motorsports, and they were not really that great last year. They kind of lost her GMS backing, so that may have affected her as well. She also did have health issues, with my, which honestly might have hurt her overall. And I will give her the benefit of doubt. She's not taking over top tier ride like RCR. She's taking over JGR, like some people thought may be what it could be, and like other big organizations like Junior Motorsports. She is riding for kind of a smaller team and kind of a mid pack team as well. But I'm going to be real with y'all. I think she's going to struggle in her five starts and whatever starts, other starts she's going to run because she would like to run more starts as well in 2021. And I don't honestly think that she's going to do a lot of things. I really do wish her the best luck. I hope she can impress me. Her ladder up through NASCAR, though, really has not been that great, if we're going to be honest here. And I'm not anticipating much for Natalie Decker heading into 2021. That's my honest opinion. But I don't think Natalie Decker is going to do a lot of great things. That's just my opinion. I really hope to be proven wrong this year. Maybe she'll improve. And it's only a few select starts. But honestly, I'm really not expecting too much for Natalie Decker. And now we're getting on to the final major story of this episode. Gareth Smithley 
is going to be attempting to qualify for this year's Daytona 500 in the number 13 car. And Trophy Tractor will be the major sponsor that he will have for the 13 car. It was also announced that Timmy Hill was going to be in the 66 car. And we originally thought that Chad Fitchin was going to be the 13 car. But now we know that Gareth Smithley is going to be in the 13 car. Now look. I think Gareth Smithley is a really good super speed racer, and I do think he is a pretty talented race car driver. But I do not think that Gareth Smithley is going to make this year's Daytona 500 for multiple reasons, and here's why. One, I don't think he's going to make it in on speed on pole day. There's a lot of cars that are really, really fast. You have a Penske car with Austin Cindric. You have a college racing car, which has backing from RCR with Kaz Grala. You have the 62 car, which Noah Gregson is driving, which that car is going to be really, really fast. Brendan Gaunt contended for wins in that same equipment. And you have David Reagan, the 36 for Front Row Motorsports, which they get Roush Yates engines. You also have Ty Dillon, who's attempting to qualify in this year's Daytona 500, which has Toyota backing, and they're probably going to have speed as well. I think that both Timmy Hill and Gareth Smithley are going to be the slowest cars in the field. I think Gareth Smithley actually will be the worst of the eight drivers. I don't think he's going to be terrible, but they're not going to be really up to speed. The only way, in my honest opinion, that Gareth Smithley can make it, and showing you also have to remember Ryan Priest also attempted to qualify as well. The only way I think that Gareth Smithley can make it into the show is if he's able to race his way in, which is very possible. It is Daytona, and maybe if they're able to see cars wreck as well. But I don't think he's going to make it. It would definitely be a feel-good story if Gareth Smithley is to make this year's Daytona 500. But if you want my honest and sincere opinion... I do not believe that Garrett Smithley is going to make this year's Daytona 500. I just I am not anticipating him making it this year. I think he's going to really struggle. I don't think I'm going to see him make it. And I think it's going to be Ryan Priest and Austin Cindric making it on speed. And I think that um, it, the two guys getting in is Kaz Grala and Noah Gregson on the race day. But I do think they're going to have a shot to make it in. But it's going to be really tough for them. And I do not anticipate Garrett Smithley make it in this year's Daytona 500. Again, I think it's a really cool opportunity for him. It's a really good opportunity for the sponsor and a really good opportunity for them overall. But I really do not believe that they're going to make it. He's even said it's overall going to be a tall order for us to make it in. I just to be honest with you, don't expect him to make it in this year's Daytona 500. But that is just my opinion on that. So, anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR news stories. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications so you'll be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Link in the description below for that. And support me on Patreon as well. Links in the description below for that. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like so YouTube can recommend more of these great videos out to you guys. If we do that, I would greatly appreciate that. What are your thoughts about Natalie Decker getting a few select starts in 2021 at Xfinity? Do you think it's too early for her to be rushing up to Xfinity or no? Let me know in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about Gary Smithley attempting to make this year's Daytona 500? Do you think he's going to make it into Daytona 500 or not? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.